Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about obesity a little bit. And th there's a, a big misconception we have around obesity. Many of us believe that obesity is caused by overeating, okay? And you may believe this makes sense, okay? So if you eat, or if you burn 2,000 calories a day and you eat 3,000 calories a day, if you keep that habit up, you're going to gain weight, right? And, and over time, you'll become obese, perhaps. So it, it may seem like it makes logical sense to blame the obesity on overeating, right? However, let's zoom out from this obesity issue a little bit and look at the wider picture. And to do that, I'm going to give you an analogy. I've used a similar analogy before, but imagine that there is a... Imagine that the drywall is leaking on your roof and it's leaking right onto your TV, okay? It ruins your TV. You go to the store, you go to Home Depot, you buy a new sheet of drywall, you, you patch up the drywall and then you'll also buy a new TV on the same on the same trip put the new, new TV and in and well a week later the drywall's leaking again and your new TV is ruined what went wrong well what happened was that we didn't fix the roof there's a hole in the shingles and we didn't fix a hole in the shingles we treated a symptom of the problem we fixed the drywall and we didn't fix the roof right so, in this analogy, the new drywall that you put up is analogous to the, the, the calorie deficit of your new diet, right? And the weight that you lose is analogous to that new TV. But, well, fast forward a couple months, maybe a year, you're obese again. What, what went wrong? Well, you didn't, again, you didn't address the problem you are effectively treating symptoms of a problem and you're not addressing the underlying catalyst. So, in this analogy, what is analogous to the roof? What is What are the shingles in this analogy? Well, it's the quality of the food you're eating, okay? So, again, a, a lot of us believe that obesity is caused by overeating, but it's not. Obesity is a phenomenon caused by an environment with an abundance of macronutrient dense micronutrient deficient food in other words it's obesity is caused by an environment with an abundance of junk food processed food so if you are eating a diet full of processed food and you try to cut calories what's going to happen is it's not going to work long term why because that processed junk food does not have the micronutrients that your body needs to thrive so when you eat that junk food, when you cut back on those calories, you have even less micronutrients than you did before when you were obese, okay? The only reason you are driven to eat in abundance is because you're not getting the micronutrients your body needs. So what does your body tell you to do? It tells you to keep eating food. You gotta eat more food, right? And if the only food in your environment is junk food, you're, going to, you're never going to fulfill your micronutrient needs and you're gonna keep eating until you're obese, right? Again, obesity is a phenomenon caused by an environment with an abundance of macronutrient-dense, micronutrient-deficient food. There's a lot of macronutrients. That's carbs, fat, and protein. Well, to a lesser extent, protein, but definitely a lot of carbs and fats in the junk food we eat. But that, that junk food, it doesn't have the micronutrients we need. So our body's going to store those macronutrients. It's going to store those... that carbs and the fat as fat over time and you're going to become obese okay if an individual eats unhealthy food they should expect to feel miserable whether they are in a calorie deficit or a calorie surplus okay it doesn't matter the the problem was never how much you were eating it was what you were eating okay and if again if you're an individual who's eating that processed food and only that processed food you're going to feel terrible. You should expect to feel miserable if you're eating junk food, okay? And you're going to function uh, unoptimal. You're, you're going to effectively be dysfunctional if you're eating junk food, okay? Because, again, you're not fulfilling your body's micronutrient needs. So, on a wider scale, though, if a society as a whole only eats junk food, if the environment is only providing them junk food, then... That's just society as a whole should collectively expect dysfunction. And that's what's happening in America today. The reason 40% of the country is obese is because we're all eating 
processed junk food that doesn't have the micronutrients our body needs. So, by extension, we create unhealthy socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures. The old quote says that we are what we eat, okay? It, don't overlook the wisdom in this quote, okay? It, we have to understand that if we eat junk food, our body's going to be dysfunctional, and we're not going to have the capacity to create healthy socioeconomic and sociopolitical structures. And that leads to a whole host of, of vicious cycles. We blame our political opposition, we blame our cultural opposition, we blame you know, the, the, the gender divide, we blame an, another race, we blame another political party, we blame another religion. We blame anybody because we didn't see where the, where the original catalyst, what the original catalyst of the problem was. And it was the fact that we didn't fix the leak in the roof. The leak in the roof is analogous to the soil that we grow our food out of. If we grow food out of soil that is deficient in micronutrients, that is deficient in biodiversity, we reflect the state of that soil. If we, it, it, say you even do grow, you do have healthy soil, but you take that soil and you strip all the, the nutrients out of it with all the processing that we do, the over-processing of the food we eat, it doesn't matter what the soil looks like anyway. So you could grow Doritos, the, the grains that, that go into Doritos, or the, the cornmeal, whatever it is, you could grow those in an organic manner, but if you over-process them and take all the fiber and strip all the nutrients out, it, it's going to have the same end result. We have to understand that it's not, obesity is not caused by overeating. The overeating is caused by micronutrient deficiencies. There's a deeper underlying cause here that we have failed to address. So if you are one of those calories in, calories out people who believe that you can eat Twinkies and lose weight, it's true. If you, if you willpower yourself through, if you power through and force yourself to eat 1,800 calories of Twinkies instead of 3,000 calories of Twinkies, you're going to lose weight. But in that process, you're going to feel absolutely miserable. Okay, and I challenge you, okay, find me somebody who has maintained a giant diet of junk food and maintained the weight loss that they got from that diet over a long period of time. If you find that person, you will have either found a very, very miserable person who is using willpower to, to hammer that diet for the rest of their lives. And in effect, they're basically fixing the drywall every week and buying a new TV. That's the, that's the analogy here. Or you have found somebody who has found another way to patch that, that, that misery that they feel. And what other ways are there? Well, maybe they, maybe they drink a bunch of alcohol. Maybe they smoke a bunch of weed. Maybe they do some other drug. Maybe they gamble. They will have some other addiction to fulfill that dopamine to bo boost that they need to be happy. If you don't have... A, a sufficient amount of micronutrients in your body you're going to be miserable and you're going to seek some kind of addiction to fulfill that misery maybe you eat junk food again maybe you drink alcohol smoke weed all of these other addictions the problem is that we are not eating enough food the, the right foods to foster a gut microbiome that produces the serotonin that would replace the need for those dopamine rushes okay it, in effect if you are that calories in, calories out person who is continuing that diet of junk food and you you keep yo-yoing in your diet, it's because of the junk food. It's not because of the calories. It's not because of your lack of willpower. Every single person is going to get sick of fixing the drywall every week and buying a new TV every week. Just like you're going to get sick of, of trying to force yourself to, to only eat junk food below in a calorie deficit right it's not going to work long term if we want long-term solutions we have to throw away the idea of a short-term diet and we have to adopt the idea of nutrition a nutritional lifestyle change that is led by eating healthier foods okay you can take baby steps in this process you don't have to flip overnight you don't have to become uh, 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 I don't know. You, don't, you don't have to eat perfect you don't have to quit cold shoulder. But what you do have to do is you have to make small changes. Instead of restricting yourself of the junk food, instead try to think about it as adding healthier food to your diet. 
fibrous food, perhaps. As you add that fibrous, this whole food, plant-based, fiber, high fiber foods, what will happen is it will push out the space that you have for the junk food. Keep adding stuff to it. Add a lot of diversity to your diet. And over time, well, over time, you won't have the cravings for the junk food. And that doesn't mean you can never eat pizza again or never eat ice cream again. It's not like that. What it means is that you will have the right micronutrients in your body and the treats that you get from eating that pizza or that ice cream will be more enjoyable and you'll feel better too. It, it's not like we have to give up all of these, these, this, these processed foods entirely. I love pizza. I, I, I eat pizza probably, maybe not quite once a week anymore, but I couldn't live without pizza. But I don't have to. Okay? You need to learn, again, that it's about a nutritional lifestyle change, not a diet. If you're, if you're trying to, to take a temporary change to your diet to lose weight, you need to understand that that will backfire and you will yo-yo. You will gain the weight back. This is why 95% of diets fail. There are statistics out there that say that 95% of diets fail. It's because we have this mindset that we're going to go on a temporary diet and and change our our habits temporarily and then we can just go back to our old our old way of eating it doesn't work long term okay again so obviously we need to eat healthier food but there are some barriers to that right there's economic barriers to that it's uh, organic food is expensive as hell i don't even buy all, all organic food I, I i've been slowly buying more and more but how can we fix that problem well we need to understand that we are what we eat and to, by extension we need to foster a mindset of uh, of health we need to prioritize our health and what that means is perhaps we need to vote differently we need to vote for people who support regenerative agriculture we need to vote for people who are going to go into office and fund regenerative agriculture and get rid of this the agricultural methods that we're using now that are destroying the soil again if you're obese and you're listening to this don't shame yourself it's not good. It's not going to help you, right? It's just going to, if you're on this calorie deficit diet and you cheat and you eat 2,000 calories more than you're supposed to, you feel like shit. And then the next day you try to, you try to make up for it and you try to eat nothing, right? I've done that thousands of times before. I've been there weighing everything that I eat and, and tracking all of it. That never worked long term. That, that calorie tracking never worked long term until I actually started eating healthy food. And it won't work for you either you will you will continue to yo-yo your weight up and down until you finally decide to change the food you're eating the quality of the food it's not just about quantity it's quality too if you try to force the quantity strategy if you try to force that calorie deficit without changing the quality of the food it, it, it's you're gonna fail okay your body is going to to run out of willpower and it, it's 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 just like that drywall analogy you're gonna get you're gonna get fucking sick of fixing drywall and buying a new TV every week. So fix the hole in in the roof, fix the shingles, get the ladder, do the hard work. That means again, slow sustainable changes. Don't try to do this overnight. Don't quit your old diet cold turkey. Leave room for that processed food, but hmm, push it out over time, and you'll still get to enjoy it. It'll still be a treat every now and then, and you well, know, you'll be healthier, happier, and by extension, we can fix the other problems in our society. Again, we are what we eat. All of our problems begin in our gut. They begin with the things that we put in our mouths. Thanks for watching.